A high-risk pregnancy is one in which the obstetrician has identified uh, risk factors that make it at increased risk for poor outcome relative to a normal pregnancy or a routine pregnancy. Twin pregnancies is a great example. Um, twin pregnancies uh, are ones that have two babies, so you have a lot of risk factors to the mother for premature birth, for growth problems with the baby, um, or also um, for preeclampsia, which is when we have pregnancy-induced hypertension or blood pressure problems. It used to be that we thought advanced maternal age was a risk factor, and it certainly is, we think, after the age of 40. Um, but in the Bay Area, the average age of first-time mom is, is on the order of 32 to 35 to start with. So for us, uh, saying advanced maternal age is very routine for us. When we find a high-risk pregnancy um, relative to a routine prenatal care, there may be more visits, there may be increased medical tests that need to be done, there may be um, more ultrasounds that need to be done. It really depends on the risk factors that we're looking at. As far as our success um, over the last 16 years, I would say that we have gotten better, um, but we are not perfect. And certainly we've gotten better in the area of ultrasound and detecting fetal abnormalities on ultrasounds um, and trying to intervene if we need to uh, in those abnormalities. We've also gotten much better with preterm labor. Um, we used to just hospitalize people um, and watch contractions. We now have um, quite a few tests that will help us decide whether or not someone is actually going to deliver prematurely. So one of the tools that we use quite frequently in pregnancy is ultrasound. And ultrasound is um, a device that helps us use sound waves um, to look at the fetus. And if you haven't had an ultrasound done before, this is what one looks like. This is an office ultrasound, so it's um, got some resolution, but it's not like our radiology department. But it can be quite fun and also a great tool in a safe and non-invasive way to take a look at the baby or babies. So you can just put uh, gel on a transducer, that's what this is, and this goes right on the belly of the mom and it helps us see what's going on with the pregnancy. Um, and we can do this uh, every other week if we have twins, just to make sure we see two heartbeats. Um, and if we need more detailed uh, ultrasounds done, we can send them to our radiology department. Prenatal testing um, early in pregnancy has gotten a big change in the last four years. We uh, used to say that um, we had the AFP test, amniocentesis, or CVS, which are invasive tests. Now we have something that is a non-invasive test done in the first trimester along with blood work done in the second trimester which helps us predict over 90% of the time whether or not a baby is free of having the risk of Down syndrome. That is a big change from about 10 years ago and this has been mostly in the last four years that has, this has become routine. These tests are voluntary, certainly there are false positives and a lot of um, individuals choose to have them done because they want the information to determine whether or not they want to go ahead with an invasive test. So if your statistics are not very good, if your statistics come back after this non-invasive test that you have a 1 in 10 chance of having a baby with Down syndrome, you may choose to move forward with an invasive test. Whereas if your outcome after the statistics is one in 10,000, you may not want to do that test because of the risk of miscarriage. To fix problems in the womb is a very general category. If it's a chromosomal defect, something that's intrinsic to the fetus, such as Down syndrome, such as a uh, chromosome that's extra in each one of the cells, we, we can't fix that. We can give the information to the patient and to um, the family, and they can decide what they want to do with that information. We can optimize the outcome if they choose to continue the pregnancy, or they can choose to terminate the pregnancy. As far as other types of defects, there's amazing um, things that you can do. There are now tests um, that can be done for identical twins, that if they uh, start uh, developing problems with growth discrepancy between those twins, that there is a laser procedure that can be done elsewhere where they can actually uh, put little holes in the membrane between these babies and make it so that the growth can become better for those babies. Furthermore, there are certain tests um, that we can see that there's a problem with the heart. So we can look at that heart more carefully. 
um, with special testing and determine you know, what kind of fix that baby might need at the time of birth. What you can do to avoid a high-risk pregnancy is preconception counseling. Go in and see an, an obstetrician gynecologist, go through a full history, family history, your own history, um, whether or not there's babies in the family. Find out if there's problems with babies in the family of your you know, cousins or sisters and uh, determine what those are and come in and, and ask us, you know, is there something I can do? Can I be tested for genes beforehand if that's what you want to know? The question is, is that what you want to know?